Hi, uh, Dr. Savage. Um, I want to talk about uh, how Syrians are leaving the uh, refugees are leaving um, Syria and not fighting along with that that man that was on the phone. That um, they should all be staying there, helping him out, and that he really doesn't need our forces if those people would stay there. So you're you're, you're lecturing them or running for their lives with their daughters that they should stay there. That's what you're saying. Yeah, well, at least the ones that are military age should stay. Uh, no, that's very, very no noble of you telling them to stay there and be get killed and uh, let their daughters be raped by ISIS. That's very bold of you. No, I don't want the daughters to stay. I want the sons who are military age to stay. And well, why? Wait a minute, excuse me. Why isn't the United States defending them? Well, the United States should help them out. but yeah. you have to have Why is Obama ignoring them? Why is he not dropping them weapons and sending in uh, special forces to defend these people, the Assyrians? Why do you think? I really think Obama doesn't care about them. I think Why is Obama bringing in mainly Muslims, 98% Muslims from Syria? Virtually no Christians, no Yazidis, no Assyrians. Why? I think that he is uh, Muslim himself, actually, and he wants to just bring in his brothers. All right, well, that's a, f a fair answer, but that's not even the problem. The problem is not whether he's a Muslim or not. The problem is which part of the Muslim worldwide community does he stand with? That's the real question. Because even retiring generals are questioning why he continues to support the terrorists who are trying to overthrow Assad. Generals who try to talk sense into him are saying even he knows his policy of the so-called rebels in Syria has failed, and yet he won't change course. They're asking why. I guess they haven't watched Homeland often enough. I guess they don't watch enough television to get reality. It's an interesting fact that maybe they ought to watch Homeland a few more times from the beginning. Then they might, might see reality, you know, about... A captured American soldier, captured by the enemy in Iraq, converted to Islam, released to America to be an undercover agent, uh, or rather a, a, a double agent. He comes back a war hero in Homeland. He's elected to Congress. Everyone looks up to him because he's the real McCoy. Meanwhile, he's plotting terrorist events in the country. His own family doesn't know he's a Muslim until one day in about season three, as it's written, his own daughter sees him praying on a prayer rug uh, in the garage or in the basement. And then he tells her he's just simply a Muslim, but she even she doesn't know that he's actually a terrorist. You need to watch the show. Oh, by the way, a little side note, I understand this was the most popular TV show that the president watched. He was obsessed with it. He obsessed with it so much that he invited the, the main actor to the White House. It's a very interesting uh, little anecdote that you probably haven't heard anywhere else. You didn't know that? Now, you can ask why he was obsessed with Homeland. You could ask why he had the actor who played the double agent to the White House. You could ask all the questions you want because you're never going to get the answer because of the fact that the media is uh, owned lock, stock, and barrel by the Democrat, socialist, Islamist machine. And there's only so much that anyone could take. There's only so much of a horror show that anyone could take on a daily basis. You know? But Hillary's going to be worse, incidentally, if she wins. If Trump doesn't win and she wins, it'll be worse under her. There'll be a reign of terror like you've never seen. The Arkansas machine will be running America again. The Arkansas machine will come back with a fury you've never, you've never seen. We'll truly have zero leadership. Zero leadership in the world. Zero leadership in America. Zero strategy against ISIS. We'll have zero military when her and her feminist colleagues get through with them. We'll have zero education where there'll be nothing but brainwashing in the schools about the wonders of Islam and the evils of America. We'll have zero culture with rotten role models put out by Hillary and her uh, wonderful friends, all of the, all of the rotting fruit on the, on all of the rotting guava on the jungle floor. Immigration? Immigration? She won't be able to do it fast enough. Religion? Are you joking? Science under Hillary Clinton? You must be kidding. In the midst of the most cooling trend you've ever seen, she'll tell you about global warming. You'll have trade treason. You'll have a big zero for the American economy. You'll have zero free speech, zero freedom of the press, zero civilian security. You'll be told to keep your mouth shut and obey the feminazis. You'll have a national police force. Your guns will be gone. There'll be no constitution. Yep. So if you think government zero is bad, well, you're right. But you've seen nothing yet if you elect her. 
WABC, Irene, welcome to the program. What's your topic? My topic is the fact that there are Jews that are helping the Yazidi and Christian. And there is a, a businessman, a very wealthy businessman from Canada. Um, I was told not to mention his name. You can Google it yourself. Ms. No, no, Kevin. I know you're right. There is a businessman from Canada who is Jewish, who is helping the Yazidis. I am asking about the uh, official Jewish organizations, the Zionist Organization of America. Why have they not helped these people? I cannot speak for them, but I can speak for this one no, no, I don't want to hear about the one man. I want to know why the American Jewish organizations, which are so loud in defending Jews with the never again Holocaust message, why they're not helping Christians and Yazidis. That's the only thing I've asked. I don't know. I don't know that that's true. But what do you mean you don't know if it's true? What don't you know about what I just said is not true or true? I know about this one man who has taken... Yeah, I know about him as well. I contacted him once. He was almost on the show six months ago. And we couldn't make the schedules work, so that's why he never made it to the show. But what about all of these other Jewish organizations that are so concerned about anti-Semitism? Why don't they help these people? Well, I think they're, they're putting a lot of their dollars into security. I think security for what? Security for who? Are going into wait, secu wait, putting their dollars into security for who? And their schools aren't, aren't blown up, and their children aren't stabbed. You actually believe they're spending any of their money on schools here in America? I believe they're spending tons and tons of money on security. Yes. For, why, for wait, why do you believe You believe it or you know it? I know it for sure. Well, how do you know it? Give us some facts. Because I have my children in Jewish schools. And, and you're telling me the money for, for, body, for guards, armed guards, is coming from these groups? It's not just armed guards. It's security cameras. It's not just armed guards. And yes, there are there are federations. There are groups that absolutely positive. The Jewish Federation is not helping the Yazidis, though, or the Assyrians. Why not? Well, maybe their funds are going into protecting Americans. Maybe their funds are, are who's on the who's on the more threat right now? Jewish Americans or Yazidis or Assyrians? I don't understand your question. I'm sure you understand it. You just don't want to answer it. Who's on the more threat, Jewish children in schools in America or Yazidi girls who are being raped around the clock? I'm not answering that. No, of course not, because it's an uncomfortable truth. Thank you for the call. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C. Then we got the uh, murder over in Las Vegas when Lakeisha, Lakeisha Holloway drove her car on the sidewalk. 40 miles an hour down a street in Las Vegas, jumped the curb, and plowed into people to kill them. Police ID suspect in deadly car rampage as a 24-year-old homeless woman. One dead dozens hurt after car drives on Las Vegas sidewalk. A 24-year-old homeless woman who cops said had been living in her car with a 3-year-old daughter. I guess she's a mom. I guess she loves motherhood was charged Monday in the automobile rampage that killed one and wounded at least 35 others. She was not remorseful. Lakeisha Ann Holloway, Lakeisha appeared stoic when cops encountered her. Take a look at her, her map. Take a look at the face. Take a look at the map, the anger, the hostility, the pride. Like, what you going to do to me? Like, I did what I wanted to do. Now you can, you can shove it. Take a look at her face. Take a look at the face and tell me that this face doesn't tell you a million things. Sheriff Joe Lombardo said during a conference today she didn't appear to be distressed due to her actions. No, really? She looked pro she looked happy to me. Typical gangbanger face after arrest. Pride. He said they cannot rule out terrorism. You hear this? As of now, we do not believe it to be an act of terrorism. But they're not ready to rule it out 100%. They said the act is going to be very hard to explain at face value. All right. Let's not rush to judgment. Let's not rush to judgment. There was no evidence that it was um, related to to Islam, Muslims. There's no Allah Akbar. Nothing. Not even a halava bar. Not even a chocolate bar. Nothing. No chocolate bar, no uh, halava, no Akbar, nothing to relate it to that. So maybe she's just an evil nut, a drug addict. Who knows? She killed someone, though, 32-year-old Jessica Valenzuela. 
and a number of other people are going to be crippled for the rest of their life. But I'm just giving you a little update of the world we live in. You know, you may say to yourself, Savage, look, it's Christmas week coming up. You're off Thursday and Friday. There'll be best of. Why don't you just back off a bit, take it easy, cruise through the week, then cruise through New Year's Eve. What are you eating your heart out over the world's problems? You're right. That's all. Keep asking the question because there's no answer to it. This is how I am. At the end of my life, if I have time to reflect, which I doubt because I don't think it works that way, Everyone thinks they're going to have time when they're old and sit back and smoke a pipe on a chair with a, a little pet lamb somewhere or next to a cozy fire with a blanket over their legs and reflect on their life's work. It doesn't happen that way. You just die and that's it. Or you're in agony and don't remember anything. More or less, there's no reflection. Zero. So every night is my is my uh, the end of my day. In other words, the end of my day is my every day. I have to look back and say, did I do anything of value today on the radio? God gave me the the gift the brains, the voice. Right now I have the gift of the hundreds of stations. There was a time I had nothing. And if you remember a little history about Michael Savage, there was a, a blank and nothing. I built it back up from nothing. I have to make it count. So I have to say to myself, did, did what I do today have any value or not? Did I help anyone? Or I just blow hot air like a Howard Stern and tell dirty jokes and then run to the bank and make believe I'm an American folk hero? revered by everyone in New York and Hollywood. See, it's not a matter to me about money or the size of an audience. It's a matter of what, what impact am I having and on who and what am I doing. So when I bring up the girls being raped in the Middle East and I show you that you can go to michaelsavage.com and you can see the girls screaming, you can hear them screaming as they're separated from their mothers and fathers by the subhumans, unto mention, called ISIS. And then they shoot the fathers. And then they trade the mothers as slaves, and they rape the young girls till they die. I'm sorry, this is going on in my lifetime, and I did nothing? That's why I brought up the Jewish groups. So far as I know, they've done nothing for these people. And they, of all people, should be doing something for them. I'm sick and tired of hearing about Israel from Jews. I'm sick and tired of Israel being the only thing that Jewish groups care about. I'm sick of it. And that's why I'm bringing up the Jewish people. Of all people in America and anywhere on earth, it's the Jewish people who should be screaming the loudest about what's being done to the Yazidis and the Assyrians by the subhumans in ISIS. Not a word from the ADL. Where is the ADL? Where is the American Jewish Committee? I'm giving you the name of there's 50 such groups. Where are they? Where's the National Council of Jewish Women? Where's the Rabbinical Council of America? Where's the Union for Reform Judaism? Where is the Union of Orthodox Jewish Congregations? I can read you all the names of all these organizations. Zionist Organization of America. Why are they not raising the consciousness of the world about what's being done to these little girls right now? I mean, the Jewish people teach lessons from the Bible and from their own history, which says if I am not for myself... Uh, who will be? If I'm only for myself, who am I? There you go. Rambam is speaking right to you. All of you Jewish organization people. That lesson is for you. If you're only for yourself, then what are you? You're nothing. And if you're only for Israel, then what are you? You're not what you think you are. You're not a good person. Now, I'm focusing on the Jewish people because they suffered so badly during World War II. And they said never again. Good for them. I'm glad Israel exists and it's such a tough state. I'm glad they kill their enemies rather than coddling them. I'm glad they don't have Obama running Israel or there'd be no Israel. If, God forbid, they ever elected Obama in Israel, you know what it'd look like? It would look like Beirut, Lebanon. So that's why I say it, the Jews of all people should be screaming out the most, but they're not. Now let's go to the other topics. Lori, KBET Radio is calling about the heroin addiction that's sweeping the country. Lori, go ahead and make your point on the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, you're my idol. I've asked everyone for your book for Christmas. I guess I just wanted to comment on the heroin epidemic because uh, I live in sort of the suburbs of Las Vegas. It, really, it swept through my high school. I, myself, am actually a heroin addict. Um, I'm 24 years old, and I've been a heroin addict for nine years. So that was my sophomore year of high school. Um, and I, I don't know when people say that um, it can happen to anyone. I don't believe that. I think it's either... You either have it or you don't. Some people have the ability to say absolutely no, and some people just can't say no. And 
I don't know. I just, uh, it's really, it's it really is. No, because, because I made the statement that it can't happen to anyone.